The hosts feel it would be a little unkind to present this podcast without just a word of friendly warning. We are about to unfold the story of Frankenstein, a man of science who sought to create a man after his own image without reckoning upon God. It is one of the strangest tales ever told. It deals with the two great mysteries of creation, life and death. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now's your chance to. Well, we've warned you. Welcome once again to the Frankencast. I am the mad doctor, Anthony Bowman. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm joined by... The shambling remains of Eric Velasquez. Uh, my pronouns are he, him as well. Welcome, everyone. How are you doing? We watched Ghost of Frankenstein today from 1942. Uh, we've ha- had a few friends that have come back, uh, Bella Lugosi being one of them, as Igor. But we've also had uh, one kind of hidden from us. The uh, former Inspector Crow <laughs> is uh, now Dr. Baumer. Uh, as Lionel Atwill is his name, uh, the actor's name. Yeah, and I, I looked because yeah, I noticed I recognized him right away too, and was and looked it up, and he's like in I think all the rest of them except for um, the Abbott and Costello one. Like he and it's different roles every time, but he's right. Uh, in fact, he plays a cop in like three of them, but it's a different mm-hmm. cop every time. Um, and I thought it was kind of a strange casting choice because they uh, they also got um, the. I wrote his name down. The the guy who p- actually plays Ludwig, oh Cedric Hardwick, they could be brothers. Like there's, it's mm-hmm. so confusing from scene to scene. They're like, you know, partners in in um, at the hospital, so they're like in similar roles, and then they look very similar. It, it confused me a couple of times. Yeah, actually, I did, I did think uh, that uh, our good Doctor Frankenstein was actually being played by Krogh when I sa- uh, saw it, and I was like, wait. Now he's the doctor, and then no, it's he's someone else. So yeah, he's another. He is a doctor, and one <laughs> of the most important doctors in the movie. Absolutely, he's not Doctor Frankenstein. Yes. Um. Yeah. So this movie uh, kicks off really similar to the last one, where you got like townspeople complaining that the curse of Frankenstein is upon the village. Um. You know, even though I guess they've you know they were given the village at the end of the last movie, but they're still not happy. You know, I guess the. Frankenstein town tourism board is still suffering. Yeah, but it seems like this is like a more supernatural thing that's going on. They're calling it the curse of Frankenstein, which is another movie later on. But yeah, they're saying that the other countryside uh, dwellers are shunning the village, burning uh, the fields are barren. No one comes to stay at the end because probably you have reports of a giant man stalking the countryside. But uh, kids going hungry, no bread around, all of that stuff, right? Yeah. And uh, you kind of get a little bit of like a previously on the village or while they're complaining. And like the mm-hmm. um, the character who like in previous movies we've been calling the Burgermaster, like now they're just calling him the mayor. I guess they like decided to kind of uh, stop sticking with all like the, the German terminology. Um but yeah, I mean, it seems like he's basic same character, a uh, different actor. But Burgermaster has been like a different dude in every movie so far, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the the villagers are mad. They want to go destroy the castle. Yeah, these uh, are the most proactive villagers I think that have been in any of the Frankenstein movies. They're like, let's destroy the castle right now. Let's go. <laughs> let's not wait an hour and a half until right. everything's happened. We're we're gonna start right at the beginning. Yeah, so they load up all the dynamite and they uh, set off on their way. And just like the villages are up to their old tricks, so is Igor. He's back up on the top of the castle, knocking down rocks on people. I mean, that's his shtick, isn't it? Like, yeah. Before he, that's his way of saying hi. He's going to drop something heavy on or around you <laughs> to let yeah. you know he's there. So that's what he does. He just keeps... How many parapets does he manage to throw in that one spot? He's got to be as strong as the monster, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like five or six that he knocks down. Easily. Uh, but then, yeah, the villagers still manage to, to blow up a big chunk of the castle anyway. Um, but surprise, surprise, it actually works out in Igor's favor. 
um, because they reveal the creature. Yeah, I mean, and you know, fell into that sulfur pit. Looked like he was on fire. No, he uh, he just managed to get a nice little waxing and uh, change of clothes, just like Igor. Actually, I noticed. I tell me if you noticed this, but it looked like whenever they first revealed Igor, like in the previous movie, he had kind of shabby clothes. His hair was more unkempt. You know, you could imagine Lice running in between his beard and his hair in the previous movie. Oh and yeah, this one. I mean, he just he he looks like he's got a pretty nice shirt, some nice pants, some nice shoes. You know, it's like he finally decided. You know. I almost died twice. It's time to get my act together. Let's get dressed up, get, you know, gussied up a little bit and make sure I take care of myself for my monster if, in case I ever see him again. Yeah. And I, for some reason, I think last, the, when we were talking about the last movie, I talked about the creature's like fur shirt and I thought, or vest or whatever. And mm-hmm. I thought he carried that for the rest of the series, but no, right, no. right off the, ga- the gate here, we're like in like a brand new suit, like a very nice clean suit. Somehow he yeah. like falls out of this like, dust and dirt out of the walls of the castle and is in like a brand new clean suit i have a theory that maybe he was wearing the suit underneath the vest so. <laughs> <laughs> kept it clean yeah exactly 100 percent. and the just the 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 sulfur pit just melted the fur off and everything else stayed on somehow i, I makes you know. yeah makes sense <laughs> yeah and again we have like as soon as the creature kind of gets clear the his hand moves it's Definitely the recurring theme is that's how you tell when someone's alive is their hand mm-hmm. moves. Um, and, the, and Igor calls the creature my friend. He says, now you'll live forever. They can't destroy you. And I think that's, I think he said basically the same thing in the last movie. Just whatever happens, it's, you know, the, this thing is now the hint that the creature is going to live forever. Right. And of course, uh, once again, this is kind of a reference to that uh, hidden movie that we never saw. Uh, Frankenstein two point uh, two point five, I think we were sent calling it, <laughs> where um, he was wandering around and got struck by lightning. It's like he's a lightning rod, and mm-hmm. every time he gets hit by lightning, it kind of juices him up a little bit. Yeah, and and so yeah, that's he he wanders out, and Igor's kind of acting like he's afraid he's gonna that getting struck is gonna be a problem, but it mm-hmm. turns out to help. And then you know, continuing with this secret hidden movie, Igor decides that what we need to do is go to the second son of Frankenstein, Ludwig. The so, hitherto unmentioned son of Frankenstein. Yeah. That even his brother didn't mention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, we, we talked about it in the last movie, that the brother said he never even met his father because he had died so young, but somehow he managed to have a second son <laughs> before right. he died off. So he must well, have had two kids close to these, some Irish twins, I guess, and, Right. Well, it seems like Ludwig is the older brother, right? Because he has, or maybe this just took place over a longer span, but it doesn't seem that way. He definitely but, uh, looks older, but they called him the second son, but maybe they didn't mean second chronologically, just the second son we're going to interact with. Right, exactly. And also his daughter is what? Uh, she looks like she's about 25. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and she's our first Frankenstein, daughter of Frankenstein, effectively. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, um, the monster's running around a little bit. Then they decide to go visit the second son of Frankenstein, who is, uh, they zoom in on his home, and we see that he is a uh, doctor of the diseases of the mind, just in general. <laughs> yeah, which, when it, when I saw the sign, I was like, oh, he's like a psychiatrist or something. But then the next scene, he's like, he's a brain surgeon, basically. Right. Yeah, no Frankenstein would be less than a surgeon. Of course. I mean... You know, they've all got to dabble in that. Uh, But, yeah, they're doing a successful uh, brain transplant with Dr. Kettering uh, and Dr. Bomer, as we mentioned earlier. Yes. And meanwhile, you've got uh, Igor and the creature wandering through the town trying to find uh, Dr. Frankenstein. And, of course, the creature finds what he's always drawn to, a little (laughs) kid. Um, In this case, a little girl who's lost, uh, like, a balloon kind of thing it's like a balloon on a rubber band or something yeah it's like a tether ball almost yeah right? but it like some floats jerk up kids. And... oh no it's some jerk kids punted oh right right yes so they they yeah. chuck it up on the roof and mm-hmm. it has the little rubber band so it gets hung up and so the creature decides to you know do the girl a solid and carry her up onto the roof but this kid is like a honey badger she does not care she's just <laughs> like hey big man Get that 
get my thing down. And he's more than happy. He's like, all right, cool. You're cool with me. I'm cool with you. Let's do it. Yeah, and so, you know, once again, he accidentally puts a little girl in danger. But this time, like, he, you know, he's not... He's not throwing her off the roof. He's taking care of her, but the villagers definitely don't see it that way. Right? Yeah, too. Uh, at least um, in the beginning, there's one guy who cut, tr- runs up, tries to grab him, pull him away. But uh, our good friend, the monster, just swings, smacks him. And because he has such strong, massive, meaty arms, uh, we know that that blow either caved in his chest or, as the previous doctors would say, caused his heart to explode. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so he goes up on the roof, and it looks like he's contemplating throwing her down every once in a while. And that that's a nice little build of tension. Oh, yeah. Is, and, but, you know, after just a few moments, they don't linger on that too long. He actually just goes and grabs her little tether ball. Yeah, and brings her back down safe and sound. Well, not not exactly. Remember, there's that one guy who comes running across the the uh, roof and he actually gets thrown off <laughs> so uh, it's like oh well you know <laughs> yeah the yeah. girl's safe and sound but yeah yeah, no, yeah. But, yeah he he does end up killing they talk about it that he kills off two villagers but yeah i mean they you know misunderstanding mm-hmm. clearly yeah um, and I, so i cheney like he's he's definitely not my favorite as the creature and mm-hmm. i don't he just i mean i think it might be part of like a decision that they're making but like he looks like he's sleepwalking the whole time like his eyes are kind of half closed it almost looks like they've put makeup on his eyelids to make them half closed they're just they look really heavy um and yeah he just seems like yeah he just seems like he's sleepwalking the whole time right yeah they do a z- weird zoom in on him uh one time when uh coming up actually we're about to talk about that it's that weird zoom in where you see that it almost looks like they sealed up his eyes, mm-hmm. maybe with like some type of gum paste or something like that. But out of the corner, like the corner of the eye, you can actually see his right eye, I think it was, just barely. So it's like they literally pasted over his eyes. Why they made that choice, I guess he didn't look scary with his eyes open. Yeah, I, yeah, it, it was a strange choice. I, I, that's why maybe it's supposed to be like he's still not fully healed and and needs you know Ludwig to bring him fully back to life, and then his eyes would open all the way. I don't know. Right, but also that I kind of wonder also if maybe someone didn't read the script in the wrong order, and something that happens later, they oh, yeah. decided to go through the whole the whole movie. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what it's it becomes like a big thing with with the eyes, I guess, through this one. Yep. So then next we have this uh, a young guy, Eric is his name, who. Uh, well, who hello come- there. <laughs> and he, this is where I got confused because when like when he first came in, I thought he was talking to Doctor Balmer, and then it wasn't until Igor showed up in the next scene, I was like, oh wait, that's that's Frankenstein, not Doctor mm-hmm. Balmer. Um, but yeah, he has like back to back scenes where like Eric is like, "Hey, we caught this big giant guy. We need you to come help." And the doctor's like, "Okay, cool. I'll be there in a minute." And then immediately Igor shows up and he's like, "Hey, so I brought the big giant thing here, and I need your help." <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like uh, Igor and uh, this Doctor Frankenstein have had some interactions in the past because in the prior scene, Igor literally knows of all the Frankenstein's that exist. Some for some reason, somehow, even though apparently he only worked initially for Wolf and Ludwig's father, Henry. But he's he and he mentions that he knows of the other Frankenstein and then he someone just mentions, oh, there's a guy here from the town of Frankenstein and this Frankenstein is like, Oh crap, this guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this, don't tell my daughter. Don't tell my daughter this guy's here. Yeah, he was not happy about it. Right. And so Igor tells him that the creature is now not only sick in the brain, but sick in the body. And uh, he needs lightning to, they, they need to harness lightning to heal him. Mm-hmm. And this is, so, you know, we, we keep talking about like what happened to Henry Frankenstein. And here Ludwig says that the curse of the creature killed his father and sent his brother into exile. So again, go into this secret movie 2.5 something happened with the creature and Henry again, and Henry ended up dead because of the creature, whether that means the creature killed him or the villagers killed him because of the creature. It's, it's unclear, but, um, somehow Henry ended up dead. Yeah. And I'm not too sure about that exile. Uh, it seemed pretty, 
pretty uh, fa- fairly obvious to me that Wolf decided to fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> so. <like>. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was like, well, I'm done with this town. This town's done with me. Goodbye, everyone. And in that five seconds of the closing, they left. So, yeah. Know. Yeah, so then um, Ludwig doesn't seem too into it, but Igor quickly is like, well, hey, if you don't want your daughter to know, um, then you better help me because I, right? I know a lot of stuff I could tell your daughter. Which is really weird. It's, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm sure that you don't want your family to, uh, your family's laundry to be aired like that but it seems like it's pretty well known in this in this part of the world you know yeah and in a few scenes later it doesn't take long before the daughter knows anyway but they just continue on like right like it's a big thing. Igor has something over him or something but i guess by that time the train was already rolling and, and ludwig couldn't stop yeah and also during this time like as as igor is kind of leaving ludwig pulls out two massive binders uh, at least for the time, their portfolios, uh, both comprising the notes of Heinrich Frankenstein and uh, Wolf von Frankenstein. So he has his brother's notes some way, somehow. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how that exactly worked out, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> it seemed like the end of, of Son of Frankenstein, Wolf was pretty much done, but I, yeah, I guess he dropped those on in the mail on his way out of town. <laughs> right. Oh, also, we forgot to mention, Evelyn Anchors, uh, who plays Elsa, uh, Elsa Frankenstein, was also in the Wolf Band with Lon Chaney a year, uh, well, a few months to a year prior to this. Oh, okay. So, yeah, this was kind of like a little reunion for them. And also, speaking of Elsa, uh, Wolf's wife was named Elsa <laughs> in, um, oh, hmm. in Son of Frankenstein. And then, of course, you know, Elsa Lanchester played the Bride of Frankenstein, so... <laughs> That the name Elsa has has been sort of tied into the last three movies. It's a long and storied uh, history in the Frankenstein. Household. But it seemed like an odd choice to, <laughs> like, name your daughter after <laughs> your brother's wife. Yeah, that's that's a little sketchy. <laughs> so then we pan to the uh, the town hall where they have the monster locked up inside in this little chair. Now, have did you notice? Like, I never thought that Lon Chaney Jr. was that big. But, yeah, I mean, he looks huge. Yeah, he's 6'2", or he was 6'2". When... So, and Boris Karloff was only 5'11". Okay. And he loomed over everyone in the prior movies, and now we have Lon Chaney Jr., who does. Just just there, and he's a massive, broad-chested. Like, that dude honestly would probably be a scarier monster than Carl. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's definitely more imposing. He's less corpse like and more, you know, like a monster. Right, exactly. And I think that's probably what they decided to go with in this one was less, you know, new newborn corpse thing and more yeah, you've been the monster, you're you you're big scary by all that stuff. Yeah, at this point they were they were kind of Moving away from nuance and just leaning into the horror kind of thing. Yeah, as, at this point, the Frankenstein property or series is about 10 years old. Yeah. So think about that. It's like, for us, that would be, you know, the beginning of... it's. Well, it's like right now, in this at this moment in time, we have where Iron Man started and then where Infinity, you know, Endgame stops... It's about the same time as the, yeah. as between the beginning of uh, Frankenstein and this this movie, and that's a pretty apt comparison because you know you've got all the Frankenstein movies, but then you also got all of the you know the Wolfman and Dracula, Dracula. movies and Mummy and Invisible Man and Mummy, yeah, uh, Creature or yeah Creature from the Black Lagoon would be a little later, but yeah, I mean you've got the the main you know heavy hitters all happening all at once throughout this, so it's yeah it's a very similar thing, and then of course. Like the Marvel movies, where you start inter- you know having the characters mm-hmm. interact, this is going to be our last movie where Frankenstein is a is a solo act, and, and you know we'll see more of that as we go. Yeah, uh, but they while. start mixing people up around into, from one movie to the other. Exactly. You, you got to start mixing your peanut butter and chocolate at some point, right? Exactly. So yeah, he's sitting there all imposing in that chair, um, and you know they're bri- they're talking about the girl. Uh, she's She's there with her father. Her father does not want her to testify, doesn't want her to come anywhere near the monster. But once but again, she's, 
Yeah, she's yeah. not scared at all. She just goes right up to him. The little honey badger just doesn't care. <laughs> walks up, starts questioning him, and he's like, he's he's very sweet with her, and you know he he kind of smiles and it's, he wants to answer her questions, but Duck can't, or yeah, for some reason. Yeah, and this, like, you know, I think that Cheney's performance is a lot less nuanced than Karloff's, like we were talking about. That's what they were going for. But these moments, or specifically at this moment with the little girl, you still do get a little bit of that, like, playful, like, youthful quality from the creature that we're used to from the previous movies. Right. Yeah, there's no, like you said, there's no real nuance or subtlety other than just the sweetness with the little girl or, you know, other instances that occurs. Yeah. But yeah, then our good friend Ludwig shows up and immediately, immediately denounces the monster. I do not know this man. <laughs> yeah, which goes back to our, our Christ comparisons from last time. He immediately denies his name. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the chaos, the creature breaks free and Igor plays him his little song and they escape together in a wagon. That was a pretty epic uh, prison break. Basically, the monster was just there because he he didn't care to escape until his other brother, which apparently this is the rocky relationship in the family. Like him, Ludwig and, and the monster don't get along as well as the monster and wolf. Yeah, that's true. Like, at all. Like there is it's very contentious with uh, Ludwig and the monster. So maybe yeah. it's the the oldest brother and the middle brother kind of coming into conflict. Who knows? <laughs> Could be. Yeah. But as you said, they escape uh, in a wagon, nonetheless. Yeah. And then next scene, we've got Elsa sitting at Ludwig's desk just reading all the notes. Everything. We even get a nice little recap of the previous movie in the form of the previous movie. Yeah, you get little clips that are like in her imagination as she's picturing what's happening in the diaries. Yeah, and it it kind of made it seem like um, the brain came after they animated the body. To a degree, but, you know, we know that didn't happen. You have to have <laughs> yeah. the brain to animate the body. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And and then, so if, if reading the notes wasn't enough, then she sees the creature and Igor at the window and screams. So, like, at this point, the cat is totally out of the bag. Like, mm-hmm. Ludwig has no reason to try to keep anything from her at this point, and yet, you know, continues on with this whole project. Mm-hmm. And then Igor decides, of course, you know, hey, we're here. We're just saying hi. Let's let ourselves in to the family uh, family estate. So they do, and a Dr. Kettering uh, attempts to put a stop to this. And the monster puts a stop to Dr. Kettering. <laughs> Indeed. And uh, then <laughs> this whole tr- thing they use a couple times in the movie is so silly, but it's it's great. <laughs> so, like... <laughs> Ludwig needs to uh, shut this down quick, so he just fills the whole hallway with knockout gas. With not, how do you have? He has labels, Anthony. He has labels for the main hall, for the basement. <laughs> how often does this man have this situation? <laughs> and like, I get that this the estate is also like his mental hospital, so maybe there's like patient riots, but still, like, I mean, yeah, that's just a, that's effective. I mean, yeah. if there's any riots, they get shut down immediately. As yeah, those... and it works. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We... Uh, mm-hmm. And so then, yeah, he knocks him out, and then, and then they do the nice like he turns the fans on to get the the gas out, and it's just like obviously reverse footage mm-hmm. of the smoke coming in. You see it sucked back into the vents. But yeah, Bomer and Kettering live live with uh, Frankenstein at this mental asylum slash surgery hospital like (laughs) they're in their pajamas when they they come in (laughs) so yeah this is when bomer gets uh you know he's like oh the the thing is real it's it's a real thing this monster yeah so even though uh elsa knows the deal now ludwig still lies and it doesn't mention that you know the creature just Mm -hmm. uh just killed kettering and then is now captured he's just like oh he escaped Uh, you know i don't know Right, exactly. But he mentions that uh, he used. I thought. I thought he initially said sulfurific gas, and I was like, sulfur gas is so the monster's weakness is sulfur, 
at this point. <laughs> no, he said soporific. So I was like, oh, okay. That makes more gotcha. sense. Yeah, knockout yeah. gas. Lazy way of saying knockout gas. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, but it doesn't last too long. You've got, I don't know, there's, there's this great bit where like Elsa is like, don't let this this family history, this curse of Frankenstein destroy you. And he's like, I promise I will not get mixed up in this mess. And then immediately, <laughs> immediately. cut to Ludwig standing over the creature tied up on a slab. Giving him a, a nice thorough examination, more or less. Yeah, and the creature wakes up. The, the gas does not hold out too long, and he tries to break free. Yeah, just immediately bursts out of his restraints again. So it's like, all right, we know he's super strong. Please stop. Just stop. Yeah. Just try to talk to him. He seems reasonable, honestly. So, I mean, maybe maybe that's your first line of defense, but I get it. He's big. He's scary. He looks like a ghoul. But he, act, he acts like he's going to kill Dr. Frankenstein in this, uh, this instance, but he kind of, well, he doesn't. He's just like, I'm about to kill you, but I'm not going to because you're my brother. Yeah, he just kind of sits up and swipes a little bit and then just kind of chills. Like, he's right. just... Uh, and then, so Ludwig tells Dr. Balmer he has a plan. If the creature can't be killed, maybe he can just be disassembled. <laughs> which, is, which is a great way of looking at it, and it kind of shows you how much their fam- family dynamic is broken down in that he's like, it's not really killing something that's not, you know, really alive. And then he's li- a moment later, he's like, this thing's been alive for too damn long. It's got to go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that kind of shows you where his head's at. He just doesn't like the monster. And the monster, to a yeah. degree, knows that and feels it. And and Balmer's, like, kind of not cool with this. Like, he's like, that's murder. And so he leaves. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we finally get the uh, <laughs> the reason for the title of this movie that seems kind of, like, nonsensical. Mm-hmm. Ludwig is sort of visited by the ghost of his father. Which is wild. <laughs> You know? Yeah, it's a strange scene. It's like one scene in the middle of the movie, and it's clearly a different actor. And oh, no. Like... Oh, no, it's not. This is... Oh, it's a different actor from the original. This is Ludwig with his mustache shaven off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, no. Really? The, you know? No, it is Cedric Hardwick. It's him with grayer hair and his mustache shaven off. So I guess the theory is that when Colin Clive got older, mm-hmm. he started to look like Cedric Hardwick. Right. And... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. But yeah, the, and the scene seems kind of pointless. Like Ludwig's already in on, like he's, he's already decided to go through with his plan, but the ghost of his father is like, you got to do this. We got, you know, so. <laughs> See, to a degree, I think I was, I was expecting that they were going for like a little bit of irony that this particular Frankenstein was one of the mind. I thought they were going to go with, oh, he's a little bit unhinged already. That's why he's the one seeing the ghost. And once again, he is he is the only one who sees this ghost at all or figment yeah. of his imagination. So I was like, oh, that's very clever. He's going to be more unhinged than any Frankenstein because he is the one of the mind. Yeah. Um, he's not. But <laughs> he's, yeah. he's probably the most <laughs> rational, honestly. Yeah, so, like, he actually, like, either, you know, depending on if this is a hallucination or an actual ghost, but he, like, has an idea that maybe the problem is the, you know, is the brain, as we've, you know, as has been mentioned before, so maybe the the solution is not to kill a creature, but is to just give him a better brain. Right. I I hate this idea of the criminal brain, but luckily that's fallen out of favor in our time. Yeah. For for the most part. There's still idiots out there. But it's like, (laughs) I mean, it's, it's a brain, you know? Unless, yeah. unless this was a bipolar brain or something like that, just calling it a, you know, and not to say bipolar is evil or anything. It's just, you know, different brains work differently. Yeah. Yeah. So. But criminal's I mean, not a thing. Criminal brain's not a thing. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's maybe there's a mental health thing there, but, but that's mm-hmm. definitely not something that's in the, the conversation at exactly. this point. <laughs> right. hundred percent. So, but they're like, well, you know, we got Kettering's brain right here. I mean, we could just swap those. That'll work. Yeah. Just fresh. And there's a lot of, conf- like, th- this movie kind of dances around the idea of, like, identity and how much of you is your brain and how much of you is, like, a soul or whatever. But it never really lands on what that exactly means. Like, it, kinda, you know, I mean, at the end, you kind of get more of what that, what that might mean. But, like, you know, there's discussion, like, 
if Kettering's brain goes in the creature, is the creature still the creature, or is it just Kettering, Kettering. in a giant body? Mm -hmm. uh, and no one seems to really have any idea, which is weird since they're the, the brain doctors. But, I mean, to a degree, they do answer it at the end, or close to it. Yes, yeah. Uh, but, like, Igor is definitely not okay with this, because he's like, you know, that's you're, you'll take away my friend. Like, right. he'll be your friend instead. That's my monster, uh, right. yeah. Okay. And so he's like, what if you use my brain? And then, like, we could, you know, me and the creature could be together forever. We could be which, one. Which... Yeah, which goes with to your look at the last movie. Where, like, they, they're they in love, you know. This is a way for them to be one flesh, you know. But, of course, you know, the Doctor is not, not interested in that proposal, uh, understandably. Like, you know, Igor is the, the brains and the creature is the brawn. So we don't want that together in one body. Right. L He'd be Ludwig, very dangerous. Ludwig knows what's up. He's like, he, I've dealt with this Igor guy before. We don't want him to have any, like, physical advantage over us at all. <laughs> yeah. You know, because we, we know what this guy's about. But then they immediately go into, like, I, it, I thought they were immediately going into the brain swap right then and there, right? They turn on all the machines, they hit all the buttons, everything whirls to life, and we hear, like, buzzsaw noises. But, no, they were just prepping some for some reason. All that. Yeah, there's just a bunch of lightning and stuff that doesn't really go anywhere. Um and yeah, then the, the, there's kind of like it feels like this part is sort of trying to pad the movie out. Like it's it like they could have just done it now, but they kind of have to dance around and, and take up some time. So like you know, you got another scene with Elsa telling Ludwig not to do it, and he's insists this is the way to to save the family and get rid of the curse and all that, which is you know feels like a repeat of the previous scene with them. And yeah, it doesn't really further anything. And then oh, and then <laughs> then the creature shows up. And uh, this is like the next scene, not with Elsa. The creature and Elsa don't really have much to do with each other for, for most of the story. But he comes out with his, like, you know, zombie arms outstretched like he's going to strangle uh, Ludwig. And then just, like, pats him on the shoulders right. in this really awkward way. Like, thanks for this plan. Which, again, throws confusion because, like, theoretically, you know, if the creature is the brain, then, like, you're killing you know his consciousness and replacing it with just some other person so right. the creature wouldn't really have anything to be happy about you you know you're you're killing me in favor of reviving this friend of yours right but to a degree it also is like does the creature really understand that you know like to a degree yeah it, it's like body parts get swapped out that's just what happens you know <laughs> yeah and as we'll see with that later the creature definitely is is not really too solid on how that all will work but apparently there's a hidden cell in the house now because every good frankenstein has a trap door right of course so so we have the one down into the basement but we also have the one in the basement wall itself that bummer yeah there's like a, it's like a, you they have to open one panel to get to the chain thing to open the bigger panel it's a it's very elaborate right i mean you know you've got to keep those hidden it's not very well hidden because it literally looks like just a door set into a foam wall but <laughs> you know you do what you can with what you got yeah but um yeah so as you as we mentioned the uh, ludwig and the monster they they don't like each other but it's clear that the monster still still sees any frankenstein more or less as family right yeah they seem to come to like an agreement like he he is in for this this plan um, so, you know, it seems like everything, you know, should should move smoothly from here. But, of course, it doesn't because Igor has decided to manipulate Dr. Balmer and get him mm -hmm. to perform a, a, a secret pre-surgery where he can swap Igor's brain for Kettering's brain. Right. And, but in the meantime, we also have Eric, um, Elsa's love interest who is uh, coming in with the cops and basically trying to investigate and they're looking they're not looking around yet but they're definitely like hey somebody's here somebody's come into this you know they're wandering around the the big guy and the the guy with the crooked neck and bent back <laughs> yeah know, they're they're around here so just be careful and watch out yeah so that that is a pretty similar plot line to the last one where like You've just got the cop that's sort of showing up, you know, 
put in, you know, throwing a wrench into the the plans of the doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they do a search, I think, and like they find a secret room, but it's an empty room. And Ludwig's like, "Yeah, that's you know, I'm a doctor. I have secret rooms for patients and stuff." And they're like, like "Oh, of course, that makes perfect sense." Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I do, as you mentioned, uh, Igor basically sweet talks uh, Bomber into giving him or to putting his brain in the monster's body. It's like Bomber, um, your friend Frankenstein definitely told you that this was a bad plan and he knows this guy and this guy's shady to begin with but bomber's like hmm he's definitely considering it right and there's there's definitely some stuff where like bomber was maybe frankenstein's teacher and Mm -hmm. now frankenstein sort of surpassed him and this is maybe like a way for him to uh you know be the top dog again right return return to form as it were and they do mention that something happened in the past where uh, one of Bomber's procedures failed. And so this would get him back into the town's good graces. Exactly. Which I don't know, you know, why would that work? Because everybody in town hates the creature, but <laughs> sure. Right. Uh, and then we find out that the creature has his own other plan. <laughs> so he goes back to town and finds his, his little friend uh, and carries her off as he's wont to do. He likes kidnapping children. Um, but there's like this sweet moment where like he, you know, throws the girl, you know, carries the girl out and he's like, oh, well, let me grab her toy ball before we head out. She's going to need this, right? But unfortunately that ends up, you know, biting him because he also knocks over a lantern and burns down the little girl's house. By the way, how, how much of a ninja is this lumbering monster? (laughs) Like he sneaks in on, in the previous movie and just like assassinates effectively two of the top members of the the town and this he literally just walks into her home nobody notices nobody knows anything clearly goes on to the second floor grabs the girl and then walks away like, yeah how silent is he like it it would seem like someone that big would make a lot of noise is what i'm trying to say oh absolutely and especially just even those his big clunky shoes mm-hmm. he wears would would add to that but yeah he he manages to get away and <laughs> And, like, the creature brings the little girl um, to Igor, and Igor's like, you can't do that. Like, even e- as evil as Igor is, he's like, "You're that would kill this little girl. <laughs> We're not going to do that. Why don't, let me die for you instead, again, right. with the whole, like, them yep. being in love. Um, I-, I want to give you my brain so that, you know, you don't have to harm this little girl. Right. It's like, baby, w- we can adopt later, you know. <laughs> don't worry about it. We'll be fine. We can't kill, yeah, can't kill the little child. But it really gave me, like, you know, adopted parent, adopted parent vibes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? But, and clearly the, the monster has taken a liking to this girl, obviously. Wants his, her brain and his body instead of Igor's or Kettering's or anyone else's. So it, how fascinating is it, though, that the monster chose for itself a more or less innocent brain? Yeah, and yeah, it's a, it's an innocent, pure child, and I feel like there are probably people more qualified than us. But it's interesting that he that he picked a girl too. Like I, I'm sure there there's definitely some uh, you know some ideas about like you know how gender doesn't really like you know you could have a female brain inside this body that is you know visibly male, um, and you know what what does that say about the brain? Like is you know is this would that creature be a male or a female? Um, and, you know, I mean, I don't think that when they were making this movie, they were really thinking no. about that. But it definitely, uh, you know, it raises questions that, that, you know, for us now we can think about. But, you know, it obviously does not have answers to those at, at this point. What we're saying is Ghost of Frankenstein is definitely a forward gender thinking uh, movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't meant to be, I'm sure, but it is. It's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, so the the creature says trans rights, as they say. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, but so yeah, when when Igor says no, the creature tries again with with Ludwig, and um, he's also like, no, we, you know, you can't do this. Um, and I think when when the little girl is like, please take me home, like right. then the creature like his his heart sort of breaks, and he's like, okay, maybe this isn't the right thing to do, and. 
so it seems like Elsa is going to get the girl home. And this is like the biggest continuity error in the whole movie because <laughs> uh, a couple scenes later, you have the little girl's dad who says the girl's been missing for several weeks. Mm -hmm. And I, so I, I don't know. One, it didn't even seem like several weeks had passed between these two scenes. But even if they had, what are they? Where is the little girl? <laughs> are they just like keeping her in the in, uh, you know, Ludwig's house? And right. if so, why? <laughs> yeah, you well, it, it's that's kind of a weird thing, right? If they let her go, the cat's out of the bag. But also, it's really creepy that you're keeping a little girl in your in your mansion slash hospital for two weeks without telling yeah. anybody. Yeah, so I guess at this point, it's just like, I guess we're to assume that they're just continuing experimentation for a couple weeks. But I mean, it, you know, it's like the next scene, basically, you know, the creature gives in, gives up the girl, and then you have Bomber doing his surgery on Igor. Well, also, the people in the town, they're like, no, we got to we gotta do what we what the other guys did at the beginning of this movie in Capitals. Yeah. We've got to go. We've got to go talk to Frankenstein because clearly he's behind this. Yeah, because his name is Frankenstein, despite what he has done for the community, presumably or anything else, because he's kind of the village doctor. But still, we're going after Frankenstein. Yeah, I mean, like he generally seemed to have a better relationship with the town prior to this moment. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, as soon as things start to go south in the town, the curse of Frankenstein carries over. I guess. Yeah. Exactly. And then. We we have Eric popping back into the show, and he's uh, he's trying to stop the people. But since this is either it's either nineteen nineteen thirties nineteen twenties, or somehow they've chrono uh, chronologically gone back in time, because instead of having a car, he has a horse. <laughs> and he, it seems uh, he has a horse tied up outside his office, and he rides the horse to Warren Frankenstein. Yeah, the, he looks. So, I mean, the the clothes that they wear <laughs> seem very modern to the time period the movie was made. But then, yeah, just horse bag. It, it definitely seemed out of place. Mm -hmm. So then Eric shows up and is like, "What's you know what's going on? Like we need to know the the, the, the mob's coming. If if you don't let me know what's going on, I'm not going to be able to stop them. Like things are out of hand." And yeah. so so then that's when we get um, Frankenstein is not aware of anything that's been going on basically like he they did the surgery he's like oh yeah let's let's go i'll I'll show you to the creature he's uh he should be healed up now this will all make perfect sense yeah he's dr kettering now by the way just call him dr kettering yeah and so then i guess the creature's just been healing up in this room and dr frankenstein has not come in to check on him this whole time because as soon as he goes in there the creature starts speaking and it's not Dr. Kettering's voice, as we know, it's Igor's voice, which, you know, also doesn't entirely make sense because he didn't get a vocal cord transplant, but sure, okay. Um, and they, they actually, they do like sound sync and it works pretty well. Like you've got Chaney moving his mouth and then, you know, Lugosi speaking and it, like, it looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie that this scene actually like gave me goosebumps because just the the pure malice of Igor's voice coming from something that big and durable and strong and Cheney actually does a really good job of looking like like he has some malicious intent even in yeah. his smile even though his eyes are not open still yeah so like you know he's been like really sleepy and sort of not really active this whole movie and then suddenly here yeah it's like you said like you get the body language is there like um he's a different creature exactly so technically technically the monster is in fact at this moment dead arguably arguably never to return but kind of does you know because he's the monster but <laughs> the monster's brain is disconnected from the body yeah, yeah, so we've got a new brain in there. You've got Igor uh, inside the brain, and he basically, you know, he's, he's yeah, he's like you said, it's very sinister. Like, he's he's definitely got one over on everybody. And, uh, uh, you know, Ludwig is obviously, like, very upset that he was fooled. Uh, but Igor is like, you know, Bomber's my friend. You know, he he's like, you know, a friend is, is definitely like the buzzword for all these movies. Everybody's mm -hmm. always looking for a friend. Friend, yeah. 
And in this case, you've got Igor and the creature together at last in one body, but you know they're still looking for a friend. And in this case, Bomber's the friend. But this is when the this is when the villagers show up. Yeah. <laughs> so the villagers break into the the house or the hospital. It's or you know whatever this building is that's the dual purpose house slash hospital. Right. Uh, and but you know I guess they don't know. Um, about Frankenstein's handy little gadget, because uh, gas Bomber is, manages. Bomber gas everybody, gas all, <laughs> gas them all. So good that Igor is still calling the shots, even though he has this big, massive body. Uh, he's still making commands, and that's exactly what they try to do. Yep. And then this is when uh, Igor's plan turns out to go south as well, um, which is that he just suddenly goes blind. Uh, he like knocks Ludwig down, and Ludwig's like injured, but like not, you know, he's there. Uh, and then suddenly, just, the creature's blind, like struck blind out of nowhere. Uh, and Ludwig's like, "Yeah, I, if you'd talked to me about this, I could have explained that your blood type doesn't match." And which, you know, uh, uh, the <laughs> right. science there is a little, you know, whatever. But somehow but, Kettering you know, matched up to the monster, but you didn't. You know? And of course, if your blood doesn't match, that makes your ocular nerves go Project. bad or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not sure about that either, but it's, you know, rejected tissue happens all the time, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, so now, down. you know, uh, Igor is mad because he's he's now got this strong, capable body, but it's useless to him because he can't see. Mm -hmm. So he's actually made a step back in terms of his, like, capabilities um, and so then he just like throws Balmer into the electrical equipment, which shocks him to death and also sets the house on fire. Yeah. And that's when everything starts burning. And, uh, we actually see the monster skin start like melting and not bubbling, but it's like they're applying wax to the outer layer of his skin between every, uh, transition of the fire. But yeah, he looks, he's becoming more and more melty because of the fire. Yeah, and you you said the, the the first Wolfman just came out like months before this, right? Uh, yeah, it came out in forty one. Or uh, yes, I think this came out in forty two. Yes, so the Wolfman came out in nineteen forty one. Yeah, so I I feel like this you know this sort of like face melting thing might have been sort of inspired by the the wolf transition scenes where it's like you know they they've come up with this idea about how to like use makeup and you know change the makeup between shots and like cause a transitional sort of effect uh you know and of course in that movie cheney grows fur and turns into a wolf and in this one like his face basically melts away um so you know once again the the, the creature dies and you know as we you know as you know we're, we're in you know movie four of eight so well but but I do like that they actually dropped the columns, even though they were clearly foam, right? And but <laughs> yeah. they were on fire. Holy crap! You know, yeah. you're dropping fire onto an actor. So yeah, that's that stunt was intense, right? Like I I don't know if that was Cheney, un, you know, but like I mean, yeah. What, no matter how light and soft those were, that still looked good. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And as is the trend in in all of these movies, uh, the, the movie ends with. The two innocent people standing outside and watching a building burn. So you got, you know, police officer Eric and uh, Elsa Frankenstein, mm -hmm. um, you know, standing at a distance watching the house burn. And then they stroll, you know, stroll off into the sunset, which it's actually the sunrise, but, you know, um, in the old, uh, the, the style of Westerns, you know, you got to just stroll off into the sunset. I love how the house is still burning. And like halfway through that little, like few seconds, it goes from the ominous "everything's on fire, everything's burning down" to a happy swelling score. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like well, thank you for the tonal whiplash. I appreciate that. And as you said, they walk off into the sunset, and without any fanfare, without any epilogue, without anything else telling us what's happening, the movie closes. Yeah, I mean that's that is the one thing that like these movies love to do is we're gonna give you horror for you know all but five minutes of the movie and then we're gonna tack on like a sweet saccharine ending and then that's just gonna 
make everything better again. Right. I I kind of I kind of do want to watch some more like old style horror movies to see if this happens with everything or if it's just Frankenstein because man, <laughs> like at least at least let that linger, you know? That that yeah. feeling of of dread. But no, they can't do that. You cannot leave this the theater feeling bad or worried or they're like, "Nope. We're going to we're going to slap that happy sugar ending on this and call it a day." Exactly. Thus concludes the story of, uh, you know, this chapter of the House of Frankenstein. We've got, you know, as is the norm, we've got one surviving Frankenstein family member who gets away clean. Concluding the story, so then we've got next week um, is when Universal leans into the whole Monster Mash thing and starts starts combining stories. And so we get Lon Chaney again, but not as the creature this time. Um, it's because the creature is meeting the Wolfman, and of course, Cheney's got to be the Wolfman. Right, of course. I mean, this is this is his thing now, right? I mean, he he tried to escape into the the monster, and maybe I think he tried to follow up his father's uh, Man of a Thousand Faces shtick in playing oh, a yeah. bunch of different monsters. But they were like, "No, you're the Wolfman. <laughs> you tried, yeah, to, I, yeah." He's he's so good as the Wolfman. Like his, you know, like like I said, like the, he's not my favorite. Uh, for you know, creature actor, but like, yeah, as as the Wolfman, he's just he's so good, mm-hmm. indeed. So I'm definitely excited for that. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to see him in his true element next time when uh, when Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Indeed. Well, I think it's time to say until next time to be continued. Looks like you survived another episode. The Freaking Cast is a production of FCR Media. It's hosted by Anthony Bowman and Eric Velasquez. Follow us on Twitter at The Freaking Cast or send us a letter at thefreakingcast at gmail.com. Our cover art is by Amanda Keller. You can find her at Keller Illustrations on Instagram. Our theme music is by Vivek Abhishek. Thanks for listening. <laughs>